Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shervin Ardashir. I'm going to present our recent work, which is a joint work with um, Kofi Malcolm Collins and Mubarak Shah. It's about geosemantic segmentation. So uh, the goal in this work is to be able to divide the image to semantically meaningful segments with georeference. So we want to not only say that this is a building and this is a street, we want to say which specific building it is alongside with this address and geolocation. So generally, image segmentation or superpixel segmentation is dividing the image into coherent regions. For example, here we see an image and on the right side we see the segmentation results. Semantic segmentation is the same thing but, the, but with the difference that each of the regions should be semantically meaningful. Here's another example. You can see this is the image and here we have semantically meaningful regions. We have buildings, sky, road, cars, etc. Now, uh, geosemantic segmentation is something that uh, we're trying to introduce and we're trying to label regions with georeference semantic labels. So, uh, just labeling something as building would not be sufficient. We want to say this is building A, this is building B. So we want to be able to associate geolocation and addresses to each of the semantic regions. So here's the general block diagram of our work. We have two sources of information, what is, uh, which is one of them is the image, the content of the image, visual information, what we see in the image. And the other thing is the metadata, the geolocation and GIS databases. GIS database, uh, GIS stands for Geospatial Information System, which contains 2D footprints of the outlines of the buildings. And that's what we're trying to use for performing our geosemantic segmentation. So uh, one of our resources is the image content on which we perform superpixel segmentation in this block. And in, in this part, we use the metadata and GIS data and we fuse them together to get some semantic segments. And then we uh, use an iterative process to further align the projections and improve the quality of our semantic segmentation. So uh, here is an example. We have an image and we have its metadata. We have the GPS location and camera parameters. Uh, so as I showed in the block diagram, the first step is to perform superpixel segmentation on the image. So this is going to be the part which is coming from the image content. Uh, on the other hand, we want to use the geospatial data also. So having this image, we go to the GIS databases. We know the location of the camera is here, and the camera is facing this way. We have the camera parameters, so we can uh, compute what is going to be the field of view of the camera and what objects are supposed to be present in the image content. So we see that we are expecting to see two buildings in the image. One of them on the right, which uh, are colored cyan, and the one on the left is dark blue, the dark blue building. So in order to see where we are supposed to see these things, we need to form the camera matrix, P, which consists of these uh, matrices. We want to see the intrinsic camera parameters, which we compute using the EXIF, EXIF tag of the image. And uh, the T translation is computed using the camera location, GPS tag. And rotation is a rotation around three main axes, X, Y, and Z, which are called roll, pitch, and yaw. And we assume that roll and pitch are zero, which is reasonable in most of the images. The camera is not rotated along, along these two axes. And also uh, for the yaw, we assume that we have that from the compass of the camera. So once we form the camera matrix, we can project any point in 3D homogeneous coordinates, which comes from our GIS databases, to the 2D image plane. So having these two buildings, we can have their projections on the image content. We can say where we expect to see them on the image plane. So uh, we have two buildings, 
the one on the right and one on the left, cyan and dark blue, and here are their projections. We can see that the one on the right has a pretty large uh, projection, which is completely visible. The one on the left is a small part of it, which we are expecting to be able to see in the image. And uh, after doing that, now we have these two sources of information. Projections coming from GIS, and uh, super pixel segmentation coming from the content of the image. Now we want to combine them. So uh, we combine them by computing an initial score for each of these super pixels, which is going to capture what percentage of this super pixel is covered by this projection. So uh, we're going to get scores like these, which are color coded. And you can see that these parts the dark red parts are having a very high score, uh, even though like the green part doesn't have a super high score, and the reason is that you can see that the top part of this building is not completely covered by the projection. So we use this as an initial score, but we can see that there are some inconsistencies uh, similar to the top part of this building. Therefore, we use uh, random walk iterations to uh, propagate these scores according to their pairwise similarity. And here is the smoothing process using random walks. Let's say we have uh, m number of geosemantic segments. If we have like two buildings on one street, we're going to have three semantic geosemantic segments. And m is the number of superpixels. So we're going to have an m by n matrix in which each of the elements are going to capture the probability of that superpixel belonging to that specific geosemantic segment. On the other hand, having n superpixels, we can form an n by n pairwise similarity matrix, which is just capturing the visual similarity color histogram. So having these two matrices, we can perform random walk iterations uh, using the following equation. x0 is the initial scores, and uh, s is the pairwise similarity matrix defined above. And xt plus 1 is going to be the updated scores comparing to xt. So at each iteration, the pairwise similarities refine the initial scores. Uh, so having an alpha constant between 0 and 1 will give us a closed form solution for the random walks. So the final scores for the superpixels can be computed using this closed form. So this is going to be the scores after conversions. And this is how it's going to affect the scores. This is the initial scores, as I showed before. And performing random walk smoothing, we're going to get scores like these, which are more consistent. Like this part has improved its score due to uh, having visual similarity to the rest of the building, which already had high scores. And on the other hand, if we have mistakenly scored a part of the sky high, because most of the part of uh, most of the superpixels containing the sky have low scores, that will be reduced as well. So after that, just using a thresholding on the final scores, we can get a geosemantic segment like this. And knowing which GIS projection this segmentation is uh, computed from we can have the address of that GIS building and associate it to that geosemantic segment. So here are some results. This is the building and the street, another example. And here's another one, which we can see in most of the cases it's working pretty well in the examples that I'm showing. However, these, these examples that I just showed were mostly easy examples. There's one huge building and one street or two huge buildings, so there's not much confusion. So going back to the example that I was talking about, we can see that there, there was one large projection on the right, which we went through and we saw that it worked fine, but we also had one projection from another building, which we expect to see in the image, even though we don't have it in the image content. And why do we have these type of projections, these bad projections? The reason is that there are inaccuracies in the camera parameters, in the GPS location of the camera, and also there could even be slight problems with GIS. So uh, we're going to have these type of cases a lot of times. So um, how we're going to deal with this? So let's first see what's going to happen if we do the same thing for the bad projection as well. So the cyan projection, as I showed, is going to 
result in a good Joe semantic segment. The other one, the uh, dark blue projection, is going to result in a scoring like this, which is going to end up selecting the tree and associating the geosemantic label of the dark blue building to this tree. So how we are going to realize if a projection is good and we should count on it and what if it's not. So uh, going through a bunch of examples and comparing the accuracy of our method uh, with respect to the distance of their geosemantic segments to the camera and also the area covered by their projection, we can see that there's a high correlation, So, which uh, intuitively also makes sense. If something is very close to the camera and has a large projection, uh, we, we are hopeful to be able to get good, projection, uh, good segmentations out of it. So uh, we were trying to use this idea to use the high confident projections and therefore segmentations as an anchor point to improve the accuracy of the lower confident ones. So uh, let's say we have this image, we have a couple of buildings here, and we're going to have these projections from GIS. And these projections are slightly off, in some cases like significantly off. You can see this uh, green projection belongs to this building on the left, which has a good overlap with the actual building. Also, the orange one is not bad, but this purple one is completely overlapping with a totally different building. So this is what is misleading for our method because it assumes that it found the correct segmentation and we're going to have a very bad results. So what we're trying to do is that we evaluate these projections based on their distance to the camera and also the size of the projections the area of the image covered by those projections. And then we want to rely on the good ones to improve the weaker ones. So here, if we evaluate them, we uh, use these following formulas. We define a projection reliability score, which uh, uses the projection area and also the area of the facade of the building in real world. So this ratio is actually capturing the distance to the camera and also this parameter is capturing the area of the image which is covered by the projection. So we want large projections close to the camera, give them high score. Also we have a reliability score for the segments. So let's say we use the projection, we came up with the segmentation, now we want to evaluate how good that segmentation is. We simply capture the color consistency of that segment. So it's the average of pairwise color similarity of the superpixels which were selected by that projection. So having a projection and its corresponding segment, we can associate a reliability score to that pair, which is basically the multiplication of these two uh, just divided by normalization factor. So we, we call a projection segmentation pair reliable if it had a large and close to the camera projection and is resulting into a visually consistent segment. So let's say here we evaluate these projections and the corresponding segments. We are mostly trying to rely on these two to find a transformation and use that transformation for improving the rest. So here's how we're computing the transformation. We want to find a 2D affine transformation from a set of points Q to a set of points Y. And uh, I just want to note that it, it's only affine in X axis because uh, in GIS we assume a certain height for buildings, which is just a heuristic assumption. And our inaccuracies are in x-axis because the focal length and sensor size and GPS location, everything, we assume that the inaccuracy that they cause are in x-axis. So we only will need two points for computing this affine transformation. So uh, we are trying to minimize a weighted least square, which the weight is the weight of the pair that we computed before. So Q is a set of points extracted from the projections and Y is a set of points extracted from their corresponding semantic segment. So we want to transform 
the projection to their corresponding semantic segments. But we weight the pairs based on how good they are. So if we have a very good projection resulting to a very good segmentation, we, want, we assume that that is going to be the correct location for the projection. So we're trying to find that transformation. So using a weighted least square, we're going to find this transformation. And using the found transformation, we can update the projections. So multiplying that transformation to our projection, we get a new set of projection. And now we can do all of the process that I talked about on the new set of projections that we have. So these are the old projections. We multiply them to transformation and get the updated projections. So uh, here, relying on these, we're going to find a transformation that brings them here to their corresponding segment. So we can see that multiplying this transformation to these projections on the top, we get a new set of projections. And then we use this as an input to our method another time, and then we keep going until we reach the, our convergence criteria, which means that the transformation that we are finding is ve getting very similar to uh, a identity matrix. So here is the quantitative results uh, for semantic and geosemantic. Uh, accuracy, we use intersection over union of the segments. And uh, for semantic, as long as we label all of the buildings as, as building, we're getting 100% accuracy. But if we mislabel building A as building B and building B as building A, we're still getting 100% semantic, but geosemantic, we're getting 0%. So it becomes a harder problem. So here's the accuracy if we don't use our iterative refinement, if we just get the projections and then perform semantic segmentation. And here is after using the iterative refinement, which uh, we can see that mostly in terms of geosemantic segmentation, the improvement is more significant. And the reason is that the misalignment mostly uh, make, creates confusion between different buildings. So we can still do good semantic segmentation, but because of the misalignment, the geosemantic accuracy is low. And uh, this shows that our uh, iterative process is mostly uh, helping to get better performance. And um, of course, our method is not gonna work all the time. And uh, here is one example. Having this image, uh, these are the annotated correct locations of the buildings. But if we use the initial camera parameters and uh, get the projections that uh, I talked about from GIS, we're going to get projections like this. So what's going to happen is that here the projections of building number two is completely overlapping with building number one. So it will think that it is having a large projection, it is having a color consistent uh, corresponding segment, and we rely on that and then compute wrong transformations and end up in random results. However, these type of cases with these type of confusions, like more than four or five buildings, really rarely happen. But uh, it's less than 10% of the data set, but it still happens that these are actually challenging tasks that could be uh, I don't know, studied in the future. And uh, so to conclude, we had a framework to perform semantic segmentation on image using GIS information. And uh, the method is capable of georeferencing the semantic segments. And also, it's able to deal with slight inaccuracies in the camera parameters in an iterative manner. Thank you.